This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. The Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. The Lord has me. Our God has made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. We offer up to you the fruit of our lips. Sacrifice of praise to you. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. I got it. Our God has made. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are worthy from the rising of the sun, Lord, to the going down of the sea. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. Our God has me. Our God has me. This is the day. This is the day. Our God has made. Opening prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our strength, 
and our Redeemer. You are God and besides you there is none other. Lord, we thank you for waking us up from last night's sleep. We thank you for food, clothing, water, shelter, and air in our lungs to breathe. Lord, we appreciate you, we adore you, we magnify you, we glorify you for all the things you have done to us, through us, and for us. We thank you for for giving us the ability to, to walk, run, talk, sing, do and do all sorts of things. We thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins, which we have thought of or committed against you. We ask you to help us with all of our problems. We ask for your will to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. You are our guide, our protector, our shield, and our buckler. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. bless you children of God we do greet each of you once again in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ our soon coming King this is the day that our God has made we are rejoicing and we are glad in it one of the things we have to understand, children of God, is that whether we feel like rejoicing or not, God is worthy to be praised and rejoicing is what we need to do. God has done a great thing for you and for me giving us the day. Allowing us another day in the land of the living. Allowing air to be in our lungs one more time. Allowing sight to be in our eyes one more time. 
the least we can do is offer up to him the fruit of our lips. Come on, children of God, which is the what? Is the sacrifice. God, listen, praise is a sacrifice. See, a lot of times we want God to sacrifice to us and a sacrifice for us, but we're not even sometimes willing to give him the sacrifice that he deserves. Open your mouth. You know, if praise is going on, join in with that. And I mean, that that's something that that because what what you and I can do is usher in the blessings of God in our life. There are some blessings in your life and some blessings in my life that God is just waiting for the certain level of praise out of you and me before he will release them. Wouldn't it be something that 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 new house that you've been desiring, God is just waiting for you to praise him just right? Or that new job that you you've been hoping for, God is sitting back, you waiting for that new that new house or that new job or that new healing or that new and God is waiting for his praise. So let's give God what we know he like. You know God like to be praised. Why would you even think of holding that back from God? Why would that, how could that even run through our mind to hold back the praises of our creator? So let us lift him up. Saints, we're going to take a look today at the book of Acts chapter 22 with a special focus on verse 28. Now, what have we been talking about? Our citizenship, all right? Um, our citizenship. In other words, where we are from, the, the, the country or the nation that we are members of. Now, uh, some citizenship is easy to get. Some citizenship is very difficult. You know, there, there are some countries that I travel in around the world that being a citizen there is not very difficult. The country we live in, United States of America, the reason why people are sneaking and across the borders and risking their life and packing themselves in, in uh, semi-trucks and, and risking risking death is because citizenship in this country is not very easy this is a great country a lot of people around the world see see many of us have no idea how blessed we are you know because this is what we have known and this is what we have experienced but there's a whole lot of people around the world that will give their right arm to be in this country I was watching a program on television last night, uh, 30 for 30. It's a sports show that deals with individuals that have made substantial marks in sports or in athletics. And they were dealing with uh, one young man uh, named Felipe Lopez, I think was his name. He was in outstanding basketball player in the early 90s his family was from the Dominican Republic and uh, they were dealing with how that I think the, the maybe the parents had gotten a job they had three children I think it was two boys and and a, a young girl um, and the parents had gotten jobs in the United States and they were planning to bring everyone over to the United States. Uh, 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 the, the, bo the young the boys and the young girl, when they got to the airport, they had packed up all their things and got everything. When they packed up everything, they come to find out that the two youngest children could not come. And Felipe was one of the, he was him and his sister. They had to be left. And and because the rest of the family had citizenship in the United States, they came and got started, started working, doing all kinds of things. But the, the, the two youngest children were left in the Dominican Republic and how they were working so hard 
just to get the family reunited. Now, see, many of us from here, we, you know, we can't even relate with this because, you know, we have known the, the, um, being fortunate enough to have uh, most of our families with us and different things. But in this country here, a lot of times they might let one, they might let the husband in. I've, I've, I've seen this a number of times. They might let the husband in, but the wife may have to stay back or let the wife in and the husband stay back or let two of the children come and, and two of the children have to stay. So understand that citizenship, you want to put this down, is not something to be taken for granted. Just like life, it is not something to be taken for granted. At any time during the night, we'll just use that as an example, God can require our lives. So as soon as our eyes open again in the land of the living, it's time to give God some praise. If you ever wonder when it's time to get praise, give God praise, are you, are you able to see? Are you able to open your mouth? Are you then it's time to praise God. It's time to praise God. Uh, from the book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 28, uh, the Apostle Paul, you know, had shared some truths with some individuals that caused an uproar. And, uh, you know, they wanted to. They wanted to beat him real good. They wanted to flog Paul for what he was saying. Uh, and, you know, Paul asked question, is it is it proper to, to be beating a Roman citizen and you haven't even uh, found him guilty? And, you know, this kind of shook things up a little bit because you didn't just mistreat Roman citizens any kind of way in the Apostle Paul's day. Well, we're going to look at it a little bit later. But the commander, he was concerned about this. And he asked a question. He says, then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. Well, Paul says, but I was born a citizen. We're continuing our topic and we should finish up today what? our citizenship our citizenship let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus christ our lord and our savior our strength and our redeemer speak father your children your servants your people are listening strengthen us edify us encourage us in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen our citizenship as we continue discussing citizenship we see the Apostle Paul in a situation where his hearers were not able to receive the spiritual truths that he was sharing with them. Now, understand this, my brother, understand this, my sister. There will be times when God has revealed or shared a spiritual truth with us that our hearers, what? may not be able to receive, you know, and that, and that happens, you know, to all of us. Sometimes a husband may have some spiritual truths. The wife is not able to receive. Sometimes the wife may have some spiritual truth. The husband is not able to receive. Sometimes the pastor may have some spiritual truths that the congregation is not able to receive. Sometimes the congregation may have spiritual truths that the pastor is not ready to receive. Now, you know, so so understand that that we don't all receive spiritual truths what at the same time. Now, you know, sometimes you know, again, congregation may have a spiritual truth, and the pastor may be the one uh, not not ready to receive it. I, I keep going back to these wonders. At the Christian Center Church Worldwide Headquarters, Kenston, North Carolina. Saints have been telling me about new wonders for some time. 
I wasn't wasn't able to receive it. Well, I, I we received our first bill, electric bill, for a full month having the windows, and the windows ended up saving about one hundred dollars just in in the first month. You know, and if, if if you know if that can be continued and maintained, that's that would be thousands of dollars down the road. So so. Um, may you and I be receptive to spiritual truths. That is my prayer for you. That is my prayer for me. That that will be receptive. And these people that Paul was sharing the truth with, um, they were not able to receive the spiritual truths that Paul was sharing with them. And as a result, they were in a great uproar. They wanted to kill Paul. Understand, my brother and my sister, that sometimes the spiritual truths that God has placed within us and even is having us to share with listeners is too much for them. Joseph, the Lord just flashed Joseph in my spirit. He tried to share spiritual truths with his brothers. They threw him in a cistern, sold him into the hands of Ishmaelites. Wise man told me as a young Christian, he said, son, you really want to start making some enemies in this world? He said, get to telling the truth. See, The truth, it, I'll just put it down and you know, the truth is going to make you and I some enemies. The truth. Paul didn't tell the people anything but the truth, the whole truth, and what? Nothing but the truth. And the people, we're going to see as we get into the, to the lesson, they wanted to rid the earth of him. Now, understand this, that Paul sharing the truth with the hearers of his day and them wanting to kill him or rid the earth of him that did not make what he said not true and I want to encourage you my brother and I want to encourage you my sister that what God is giving us to speak to this dying generation does not become untrue just because men and women don't want to hear it just because they wanted to kill Paul and were planning to kill Paul because of what he was saying that didn't make what he was saying wrong so sometimes uh, we may have to die for the truth well let's look at let's go back to Acts 22 and verse 22 says the crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Now, understand there are certain things, there are certain tr the truths that people can receive, but then there are certain tr the truths that people cannot receive. When Paul said this, now what this was, you know, uh, we're going to examine. When Paul said this, they raised their voices and shouted, what? Rid the earth of him. He's not fit to live. Now, sometimes the people that many people don't think are fit to live are really the ones that are fit to live but they don't realize this they 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 don't have this revelation now and the bible says in verse 23 as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air the commander ordered that paul be taken to the barracks he directed that he be flogged now look at look at we have two things here already that are not very pleasant to us that the truth is bringing into Paul's life. Number one, speaking the truth 
had people in Paul's day wanting him to die. Number two, speaking the truth in Paul's day, had people wanting to beat him or flog him. Number three, speaking the truth in Paul's day, had people flinging air in the dust, flinging dust in the air. That was a sign of mourning and a, and a sign of sorrow. And so people were sorry. People wanted to kill him. Uh, people wanted to beat him. All from speaking what? The truth. Take him into the barracks, he directed, that he be flogged, interrogated. Speaking the truth, it get you interrogated. Find out why the people were shouting at him like this. Now, the people did not know the real reason why they were shouting. Sometimes people will be upset with us and they won't even know the real reason why they are upset with us. Now, Paul knew, God knew. The real reason was that the apostle Paul had shared some truth with them that they didn't want to digest. My prayer for you, my prayer for me. May we digest the truth because if we don't digest the truth properly, just, just like food, you know, the reason why we vomit, thank you, Holy Spirit. The reason why we vomit is sometimes we have taken something into our system that, that our body, for whatever reason, doesn't agree with it. Now, what the Lord just flashed in my spirit, I was in uh, Tanzania some years ago, and a couple of the couple of pastors, one pastor from uh, Tanzania, another pastor from uh, Uganda, their sons loved the ministry so much. They were like, Apostle, we're going to follow you to the next the next country you go to. I said, well, come on, come on. I, I bring them, and I brought them both along with me. And while we are down in Tanzania, we were having a great time. They were probably in their maybe mid, mid, young, mid-20s at the time. And they would follow me to church programs and different things. But while we were out, we with some of the pastors that were taking us out. And uh, they were selling coconut juice. And I was like, you know, let me try some of that coconut juice. They was like, yeah, we want to try some too. So we got coconut juice. We were drinking coconut, fresh coconut juice. Guy cut the top off the coconut. We are drinking the coconut. It tasted real good. But it didn't agree with my system. Now, later on that day, I had to fly to Nairobi. They had to take the bus. I wasn't going to take the bus. The bus was like 15, 16 hours. I was like, I can't do it again because it was just too far. So I flew. And and went into flew into Nairobi to get rid of, ready for my programs there, and they came up, you know, uh, sometime later on on the bus. But when they by the time they had gotten there, that coconut juice had disturbed my stomach very bad, and I just began to vomit until I got all that, I mean, I was feeling some kind of bad, until I got all that coconut juice out of my body, then, then I was okay, okay? Well, what is it that we understand? The reason why uh, we vomit is because there's something that has been taken into our physical body that our body doesn't agree with. Our body doesn't digest, our body doesn't want that for whatever reason. And the same way we can do that physically, come on somebody, we can do that spiritually. And that's what happens to the, to the people in Paul's day. Basically, they're vomiting. Paul has given them good spiritual truth. Just like I drank, it, I drank good coconut juice. But my body, for whatever reason, rejected it. Paul has given the people good spiritual truth. But for whatever reason, they have rejected it. And basically, they are spiritually vomiting. Now, if you and I don't digest spiritual truths, you and I will oftentimes vomit or throw up spiritual truths. God, may God, may you and I not vomit spiritual truths. May you and I digest them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They wanted to kill him. They were uh, mourning. The commander wanted to beat him. See, they, they, 
They were shouting at him. All of these are ways that people vomit spiritual truths. When you, you give somebody the truth, I remember my grandfather when I was a young Christian. A lot of times he would just hit me with the truth right in the middle of the forehead and then just watch me. Watch and see, am I going to vomit? Am I going to try to fight it? Am I going to try? May you and I not vomit and try to fight, come against spiritual truth. All of these things you see, everything you see the people doing, from the crowds to their shouting to the flinging of dust in the air, from the commander uh, wanting to beat Paul, from the commander interrogating Paul, all of these were because people were were vomiting spiritual truth. Bible says, as look at verse 25, as they stretched him out to what? Flog him. That means they were going to beat him. Good. Paul said to the, the centurion standing there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? Now, watch this. Sometimes people that are trying to sit in judgment of us that are sharing spiritual truths are not even doing what they are supposed to do. They just going to beat Paul, a Roman citizen, and haven't even found him guilty. And, and Paul, is, it, is that the right thing to do? See, sometimes people that are, that are trying to stand in judgment over us, they not even doing the right thing, but yet they want to judge us. And this is, that's hypocrisy at a very high order. Now watch this now, because Paul just, Paul, you know, and, and, and my spirit kind of goes to some, some situations that I've been in around the world. A lot of times in certain situations, certain countries, I won't open my mouth. You know, especially in certain places in Africa, because in certain places in Africa, when I put on the African attire of your country, a lot of times people don't know that I'm a foreigner. If I don't open my what? Mouth. I have on your African attire. I'll be looking just like a Nigerian or looking just like a Kenyan because we are African-Americans. But once I open my mouth, they know a lot of times if I'm exchanging money in different parts of Africa, I have on that, your African attire. I won't open my mouth. I'll maybe let my taxi driver or let one of the pastors do the talking because once they hear my 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 mouth, they will know I'm an American and they'll start trying to oftentimes do some funny stuff. Paul kind of does a similar thing here. He lets a lot of things go on. You know, they want to kill him, you know, shouting, throwing dust. Paul hadn't said anything. But then when they were about ready to give Paul that beating, Paul opens his mouth. See, Bible says Paul said to the centurion standing there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen? Paul said, look, you need to understand my citizenship. Now, understand this, my brother, understand this, my sister. This is why it is important for you and I to let people know that we are born again in case they don't know. When we are born again, we are citizens of what? Heaven. Now, it's important. You're going into a business dealing or you, you're dealing with some people that don't know you. you know, it's important for us to let them know we are believers. Because people can get in trouble mis doing us wrong. You know, because the Bible says, touch not what? My anointed and do my prophets no harm. Now, I need to let you know. This is Pastor Brian or Apostle Brian. So in case you may be thinking something crazy or thinking about doing something crazy, you need to know my citizenship is in heaven. There are people that have countries that have gotten in a lot of trouble trying to mistreat American citizens. That's one thing I love about this great country. Oftentimes, you're not going to just treat an American any kind of way around the world. If you do, you run the risk of, of something something worse happening to you in your country. There are countries where people have mistreated Americans 
and messing around and stuff got blown up around them. We are American citizens in the natural, but in the spiritual, we are citizens of what? Heaven. Now, we're talking about, again, we're talking about citizenship. In, in Paul's day, you didn't just treat a Roman citizen any kind of way, much like today. You don't just treat American citizens any kind of way. I've been on buses late in the night in countries and different things and get stopped by soldiers late at the night at borders and different things. Soldiers come in, just going to mistreat people, you know, maybe a, a, the citizens of that country, just bully them, talking around, they get to me. And I said, well, what, 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 what is it? And they hear my voice. They hear my intonation. They, ah, he's an American. We're not going to just treat him any kind of way like we might treat our own people. Now, what, what, what do you want? Why, why, what is it? Ah, Hoga, where you from, Hoga? America. Ah, uh, let's go, let's go. Citizenship is important. Paul opened his mouth. Is it legal? In other words, is this what you are getting ready, planning to do to me? Just like I let, had to let some some soldiers know and, and different. Is this what you planning to do to me? Is this legal? Or is this something that will need to be at this checkpoint? You know, is this something that my embassy needs to hear about? And do your government, does your does your government need to be explaining to my government why one of its citizens was mistreated? Whoa, 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 yes, what, whoa, whoa, what do you want? Ah, where you from, Olga? That mean, where you from, man? United States. Ah, okay, okay. Hey, hey, let's go, let's go. Paul says, is it what? Legal. For you to flog a Roman citizens. Now, Roman citizens, you don't play with Roman citizens. You don't just uh, Rome. You don't just behave any kind of way with a Roman citizen. You don't just behave any kind of way with American citizen. Whole lot of people. Whole listen. There's a whole lot of places I've been. If I wasn't American citizen, whole lot. Put it this way. There's a whole lot of places you mess around, and get yourself killed in a place. Being a citizen of maybe some, uh, you know, country. Uh, American citizen, we're not going to just behave any kind of way. Where you and I have citizenship is important. Just like in the natural. There, there are members of, of certain families that you don't mess with. In the natural. You think, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, someone with the last name, maybe Clinton or Kennedy in this country is just going to be treated just like any kind of body? Hunter Biden and all kind of things. But this is, these, you know, this is the president's son. Watch how you treat them because of their, you know, well, citizenship. So people need to watch how they are treating you and me, child of God, as citizens of heaven. The Bible says when the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do? He asked. This man is a Roman citizen. Now, had he not been a Roman citizen, what do you think would have been done? He would have got his hind part, what? Beat. So understand, my brother, understand, my sister. There are certain things that have not happened to you, have not happened to me because of our citizenship in heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What are we talking about? Our citizenship. 
if Paul hadn't been a Roman citizen, what well, Paul would have been is beat with them, uh, maybe 39 lashes because they considered 40 to be inhumane. So they gave you 39, 40 minus 1. This man is a Roman citizen. You know, and this man is not just an anybody. You understand, children of God, we are not just anybody's. People need to be very careful how they deal with us. Even if we are wrong, be careful how you deal with us. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am. Now, what the Lord is bringing in my spirit now and telling me to share with you all before we get ready to close. That this commander was very careful with his treatment of Paul when hearing that he was a Roman citizen, how much more careful should individuals be when they find out that we are citizens of heaven? He was careful with Paul because he found out Paul was a Roman citizen. How much more careful should you be when you find out an individual is a son or a daughter of God? In other words, Rome could do something to you if you, you mess around and, and treated one of their citizens any kind of way. How, God said, how much more do you think I'm going to do to you if you mess around and treat my son or my daughter any kind of way? Let's get ready to wrap it up, children. Paul said, yes, I am. Then the commander said, said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. Paul said, I was born a citizen. Those who were about to interrogate him. So here, here's an interrogation that has been cut short because Paul was a Roman citizen. Here was a beating that was eliminated because Paul was a, 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 a Roman citizen. How many things has God eliminated and cut out for me and you because we are citizens of heaven? Paul would have got his butt whooped. Paul would have been interrogated. Paul would have been brought in for questioning. Paul would have been, but because he was a Roman citizen, I'm here to prophesy to you, child of God, your citizenship in heaven, my citizenship in heaven has kept us out of a whole lot of trouble, has kept us out of a whole lot of jams. God says, I protect you from dangers, what? Seen and unseen. We can close this message. I didn't know how the, how the Lord was going. I didn't know what he was going to bring out, but I, 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 I'm thankful. Those who were about. So there's some things in our lives that were about to happen that didn't happen. Some negative things that were just about to go down didn't go down because we are citizens of Heaven. We're going to close this message today, children of God. The Bible says they withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen. See, that, it don't just say Paul. It says Paul a what? Roman citizen. Don't think of yourself as just you. Um, don't think of myself as just me. I'm Robert Bryant, a citizen of heaven. You are who you are, a citizen. Of Paul, a Roman citizen. See, Roman citizen adds a whole nother flavor to who Paul was, what people wanted to do to him, what people could do to him. How people want a Roman citizen. You, you better put some respect on that name. We are children of God. You better put some respect on that name. What was that topic was? Our citizenship. 
So don't take your citizenship lightly. Paul was a citizen of heaven as he was a, and he was also a citizen of Rome. Now, Paul knew that in the spiritual, thank you, Holy Spirit, being a citizen of heaven carried a lot of weight. But he also knew that in the natural, come on, somebody talk to me, being a citizen of Rome carried a lot of weight. Bless the name of Jesus. Don't take your citizenship lightly. Don't play around with your citizenship. God is our citizenship in heaven has kept so many crazy things from happening to us. Enemies wanted to do this. Enemies wanted to do that. They wanted to interrogate Paul. They wanted to beat Paul. They wanted to they wanted to kill Paul. They want, found out Paul was a Roman citizen. All that nonsense ceased. And this is. Here you go. Saints, you can reach us through email at https colon forward slash forward slash thadfg.wixsite.com forward slash tcccww or on cash app dollar sign apostle brian 2000. Feel free to join us on TalkShoe, Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes daily. On Facebook, join us on Robert Guy Brian the Fourth. On YouTube, join us on the Christian Center Church channel. We can even be reached by phone at plus 252-525-4777. Donations should be sent by using the donation button on TalkShoe, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, or on the cash.